How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Lieutenant Dan, with another Falcons film breakdown. But today is a little bit different. This will be the first collegiate film breakdown that I will do for the 2018 NFL Draft and the 2018 offseason. Today, we're going to be looking at Deron Payne. And I have a friend with me, Chris Robbins. Uh, Chris, how's it going, buddy? Fantastic. Uh, just enjoying watching some film and, and breaking some guys, guys down. Uh, I'm trying to get into draft season a little bit now that we're starting to finally wind down, get the end of the, the season here. So, so uh, where can they find you, Chris? Yeah, so uh, actually we just started up a YouTube channel last week, Prospect Central 101. Uh, also, we have a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, same name, just Prospect Central 101. Uh, and yeah, we're going to be doing some of our own film breakdowns. We already started on offensive linemen, uh, a couple of other guys. I have a couple of sleeper guys up there as well. Uh, so definitely feel free to check us out. And yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy those. If you do decide to check them out. So with Deron Payne, I I didn't want to really make him my first guy to go after because I could have done a, a Vitavea video, but I did that with Vodge. I could have done a Wilkins video, but he's returning back to school. Um, I could have done, uh, you know, in, any of these other defensive tackles. I think the most important position for Atlanta is defensive tackle, but we're going to go into this blind, completely blind. I haven't watched a lot of tape on Payne, and really, to be honest, I don't think Chris has watched a lot of Payne, uh, Payne have you? Not really. I mean, I've seen a lot of Mo because I'm a Michigan fan, so that was part of the reason why I didn't see Justin either. Uh, but yeah, I saw the obviously the two bowl games, the Sugar Bowl and the Championship. I heard he did really well, but beyond that, not really. So for videos, it looks like we have uh, the Vanderbilt game, then we have a Tennessee game, then we have Clemson, and then, of course, we have the Championship game against Georgia. So we're going to go ahead and watch those games now, um, and we'll just go in and out. So where we have Payne here, number 94. Okay, so he's going to be right here. That's where we're going to have him. One tech it looks like to start. Yep, so looks like he's at the one. And let's see how he does here. So they're going to call this a... I guess this is a false start. But good to see him with some hands. I did not see where he was on that play. Where's he at? Yeah, I don't. It's a little hard to see without full screen. Yeah, he's he's right in the middle again. Okay. Let's see. He's at the one again. I've heard that he can play anywhere from, you know, zero all the way to five. At least that's what yeah. you were telling me, Chris. So let's see where he goes from here. Yeah, because I was looking, uh, I'm a Lions fan myself, first at least, uh, and we're looking for guys that can play 3-4 nose, 4-3-1, 4-3, three tech, and 3-4 end. Uh, I was asking around in Lombardi's Jeff talk, and people suggested him as one of the first options for that. I like his fight in the middle here. He's going to throw his hands up. Um, you're going to see him right there in the very middle of the screen, right here. And what's so interesting about this is that he's just violently going after it. So that shows some of the feistiness. Willing to use hands, too. Back there at one tech again. They played the screen, though, so they were going to let him through. There he is Nose? at... That is zero. <laughs> that, is, that is zero. So here we go. Initial move is good. Everything else is just kind of okay. Let's see that again. Where is he at now? Again, one tech. Yep. And he kind of holds his line. That's good. That's always a good thing to hold your line. And one tech again. It shows me off his block on that particular play at least. Same thing there. It looked like a double, a double block, like a shed block there, and then he just went right after the running back. Good job. Wow, just running past this 
Yeah, I'm not. Now he's playing three tech. And great violence, but they wanted to play a screen again, so I can't really like get into the whole. <laughs> he is playing three again. Nice. Very nice. I like that. I like, look at that arm up and over, right underneath. Mm-hmm. So he's got some technique in him. He at least knows, he at least knows what he's doing. Ooh! <laughs> okay. I like that motor. Okay, let's go back. Oh, man, you're going to see pain down at the bottom over here. Oh, my Lord. Were they trying to run another screen? I think they were. Like, yeah. <laughs> Little stunt action. Nice. Oh, he got pushed back on that play? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. We'll we'll go back just a little bit more. You're gonna see him middle of the screen here. And he kinda gets doubled. But you definitely don't want to see him getting pushed off the line too far. It'd lose a little bit of a ground there. And now we have him back at three tech again. Let's see what he does to this guard. Takes it all the way okay. to the outside. And now back to one tech. Spam the boat line is actually getting a couple yards push. Pretty impressive for spam. Back to a three. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I liked what I saw there. Maybe the guard kind of just wasn't paying attention to him anymore, but I still liked it. Back to one tech again. I'll zoom in in the in the video and show you guys where he's at sometimes. Sometimes it's a little hard. Maybe there's just something that I'm not seeing here. Playing three tech. The top. He doesn't seem to have incredible quickness, but he's stout. And that's what's so great about pain. At, at least from my point of view, from watching this bit here. So far. Can you, do you know how to slow this down, by the way? How do you mean slow by like actually slowing this down like by clicking on the little gear thing yeah yeah can we watch that get off on that last play on um, this one right here yeah okie dokie let me just move this over here i want to see how quick he gets off the line we are gonna go with half speed and we're gonna click back on this video. He's at the top there. Oh. He's getting off faster than the other guys. Yeah, I mean, he just doesn't seem to be quick side to side, is what it is. He's, and I'm jaded because I watched the Vita Vea tape. But <laughs> you know who this almost reminds me of, at least from this particular game, from what we've seen so far, is almost like a defensive tackle version of what we kind of have the premiation demo port is going to be. Mm. Like that same like lack of lateral movement, but strong at the point of attack. Yeah, yeah. What's in front of him is going to get eaten up. Unless you double team him. And then he looks like he gets pushed right out of the play when he gets double teamed. It's going to be dependent on linebackers at the next level to do their jobs. But I like to see him 
at three tech one and zero. Seems that he's versatile. Yep. But this is also the very beginning of the year anyway. How much do we have left on this tape? We're at the very end. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Sure. So now the Clemson game. So this is the semifinal. You're going to see him right in the middle there. And see, right from the very start of this video, um, we were just talking about how, you know, he would rather arm tackle. And that was in the middle of the year. Now he goes up against Clemson and see, look, he drags that lineman with him and takes his whole body for the tackle. Something he possibly learned, maybe? He still doesn't show a lot of fighting moves. Watch him up there. He's going to, I mean, look at that arm extension from the Clemson offensive lineman and his arm is straight down. The other arm is like angled. It's not really doing anything. I'm a Clemson fan though, so I could be biased here and be like, look at my guy abusing your guy, Bama. <laughs> well, I mean, as an unbiased person in this particular case, I mean, I would say, look what Peyton did the whole game. He's going to bat this ball. Ooh, he got sl oh. slugged there. Completely pancaked. Just pancaked by two guys. Trying to teach him a lesson. What that was all about. Yep, right on him. And then both of them drove him to the ground. So could that possibly be the same issue that we saw earlier in the first game? Could possibly. Could possibly be. Uh, need to see more though. I like how he's trying his hardest to disrupt the play by jumping in front and clogging a throwing lane. Just jumps up right here. He got nice got it. He had nice get off on that play right too. Looked like. Let's see here. And I'm liking him more at three three tech. Nah, he still throws his arm in there. I thought it had changed, but never mind. He likes to throw his. He likes to one hand an offensive lineman and then go and try to grab at him with one hand. Hmm. Yeah, you know, man. I think I have a pretty good idea about who Deron Payne is. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I um I don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but I have a pretty good idea that if you take him in the first round, you're not getting your money's worth. Second round, I think, is the, the value is going to be better for a Deron Payne. Because this level of play right here, you are you are getting him in the first round just because he's a big body and because he's from Alabama. I have not seen the disruption that I thought I could see from him with so much people just hyping him up over the last couple of weeks, just like, don't forget De'Ron Payne, don't forget De'Ron Payne. And like, I haven't forgotten about him. I just, I, I think we know who he is. Mm -hmm. I don't want yeah. him playing nose tackle. I don't want him playing one tech. You so tell me I your thoughts, Chris. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. I well, first, I have one thing I want to talk to you about is how much do you think that? Oh my God! Okay. Okay, that was uh, okay. That was that was that was good. Uh, man, Andy had that little swim move there too. There's just nice. some instances, man. There's some instances where he just flashes off the screen, and but then the rest yep. of the game, he's kind of just like. 
Meh. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I'm thinking about, and I don't know if this is anything significant or not, but we did talk about this with Alan last year, is how much impact does the Alabama defense as a whole have on each individual player? I mean, because when you have a guy like Rashawn Evans, who I happen to be a huge fan of, he's my number one target for the Lions first time of this year. Uh, I mean, you have Deshaun Hand up there. Uh, obviously, they're, they're loaded basically everywhere. They have Nico Fitzpatrick. I mean, <laughs> how much uh, the surrounding talent impact a guy like him? But I think that's the same question that we have with level of competition. When you're playing certain levels of competition, how much does that affect your draft spot stock and and who you are? Look, here's Duran, Duran Payne again in the middle. And this has been, you can go back through the whole tape and, and see where we're, we've been highlighting it, where um, he just puts his arm out in, instead of trying to get to the tackle. And that's not going to cut it in the NFL. That was gifted. You 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 were gifted at interception, Deron Payne. Uh, pops up in the air, and he's just in the right place at the right time. He goes to the inside, and boop, pops the ball, and he grabs this ball. Uh, that's not going to make me feel better about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, what? He caught the touchdown <laughs> last year. So he's a, he's a, he, um, you know what? I'm going to give him, um, he might be a great tight end in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know. Didn't Don Terry play fullback? Uh, for like one game or something like that. Let's just stop. Stop. <laughs> just stop. All right, I've I've had I've had enough of this game. I think we should go ahead and move on to the next one. To Georgia, yeah. Um. Oh. Okay. So. Oh. Oh well. <laughs> no. No. Go ahead. No. S tell me your thoughts on it. Like, just go ahead and restart and tell me your thoughts on it. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Um. We were talking about. You asked me about uh, Jerome Payne. My thoughts on on what I thought of him so far through the first three uh, going into the championship. And uh, a couple of things stood out. First off, I really like the way he's able to finish plays. Uh, it seems to have, at least on some plays, a high motor. It's inconsistent, but when it's on, it's on. Um, I really like his, I mean, obviously, it's not necessarily for the best, per se, but he does play everywhere. I think he's, obviously, as we talked about, the best fit at 3-tech. Um, but he can play everywhere uh and i really like his potential i mean obviously that's kind of an every drug prospect type of thing uh, but we see a lot of these guys that come out of Bamble, like the allens and the, the high towers and such and they're already pretty polished as pro prospects a large majority of the time and i think with paying you're getting someone who you can still mold and develop the way that you want to teach him uh, there's still ways that he can improve enough to where you're not getting a stagnant player who's going to just plateau. Uh, he still has room to grow and, and to improve at the NFL level. Not that he's going to, and that's not always the best thing, of course, but uh, it is something to consider that who you're getting now isn't necessarily the player that you're going to end up getting. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that statement, um, but I will say that as far as as I can tell, and this is from the limited film that we've been watching, as far as I can tell with oh, Deron yep. Payne, he seems to have the same mistakes over and over in college. And that can speak to a consistent nature in some cases. But in others, it can also speak to problem areas that Der Deron Payne is always going to have. And even when he does try to polish those out, he, it still shows something as a player. I like his, his motor. I like his hand fighting. Um, I like the pressure that he can bring as a three tech defensive tackle. 
um, or maybe even a 34 defensive end. Yep. But I definitely do not want him playing one tech nose no. tackle at the next level. Mm-hmm. He tries to arm tackle too much. He gets swallowed by double teams. Usually you can handle double teams as a solidified nose tackle. Yeah. But he seems to be washed out of plays and swallowed by double teams. And in single team, or excuse me, in in, in single man versus man contests, um, Payne seems to do okay, not great. Unless he's being told to go all out. Which leads me to believe one thing, Chris, that there's a possibility that Nick Saban is telling him or the defensive coordinator is telling him to not go all out. That he's not allowed to go all out. That he has to be the anchor of the defense. And yeah, that's exactly, I see the same exact thing with Maurice first. They used the exact same way at Michigan. Mm. Like, I know that you guys talked about you and watched your home session on him. Uh, but like his job at Michigan is to free up the rest of those guys to make their plays. Like if he doesn't make a play in three straight weeks, he can still be the greatest most tackle in football. I think that we're seeing that same kind of thing here with Payne. Like let Rashawn Evans make plays, let Sean Dion make plays. But I mean, your job is just to go out there and occupy the blockers and make sure that those guys have room. I would be interested to see how he how he is able to fare as a three tech tackle and just let run wild, just allow him to run wild and do his thing. I would be interested in seeing how that works. Yeah. Because in my mind, he's not a defensive end unless you've got him in a, unless you've got him in a 34, obviously. Mm-hmm. There's just too many situations where he throws an arm out instead of using awareness and plugging the hole with, with a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I would but much like, rather see him try to do that. Maybe it's because I'm thinking of this as like the fact that we just got Patricia, but I'm I'm wondering if he came here. It seems like a lot of his issues seem to be technical. I mean, they're not like physical issues where it's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely strong. He's definitely or quick. He's, he's definitely or whatever. Got the intangibles as far as like height and weight, but how he's using those. Yeah, and I think that that's probably the most, I mean, maybe it's just my experience here, but I feel like those are the easiest things he can fix. So if you get him on like a Patricia defense, or I've seen a lot of people lock into Bill Belichick in New England. I mean, those are two guys right there that, I mean, you're talking about people who know how to get the most out of their players and put them in the best position to succeed. Yeah, and 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 to be honest, it's it's really flash in the pan type of stuff going on when he does attack people. But a lot of times, he looks like he's on skates. Uh, he looks like he doesn't know how to hand fight. Like hand fighting's not a thing, uh, and he just doesn't look like he has a lot of moves. But okay, hey, hey, maybe technically speaking, he can learn those at the next level. And we did see potential. Like, there was that one play he had that great spin move. There was that one play he had that great rip move. I mean, maybe I mean a clock could be right two times together. a day. So, I mean, every player in collegiate sports or around the NFL can have a great play once or twice a game. Mm-hmm. It's just like that. Like, number 77 right there just drove him way off way off and i know he didn't have help from number 65 but when you're able to drive somebody out and this guy can't even like stop you you know 
Yeah, I feel like he has. I, that might be one of his biggest issues with being that anchor and base. He's not an anchor base guy. He would need to be heavier. Now I get it. He 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 put some disruption there. But when you're out on the field, why aren't you going you know all out every every play? I mean, I get saving some some strength for later, but you should be trying to disrupt the play every time you go out there. This game right here, national championship. Yeah. Like, there is no such thing as later, especially if you're declaring for the draft. Like, this is your last game. You're definitely your last game of the pro. When you're driving on number 74 there, you should have been driving to the ball hard. You're completely off balance, and he gets through your lane and, and gains a first down. Watch. You yeah. just got bottled, okay. dude. Right back. Whoop. Gone. Straight through where you just came from. So, I'm going to bring this up. You and Watch always talk about defensive wiring with a plan. Do you think that that could be his issue? This when he's attacking somebody, he goes all out and he attacks somebody. When he doesn't... When he doesn't, um, I don't think sometimes that he has a plan. You're right. Um, Vash and I talk about having a plan and and standing your standing your ground. Like right there, he does finally stand his ground. But you finally got an arm tackle to work. See, see, like you finally got an arm tackle to work. Use your hands. Use your hands. Oh my, oh my lord. Okay, look, you got there. But when you're when you're doing this, why aren't you knocking hands away? Why aren't you fighting? Yes, you're like you're keeping them at arm's length, but why not fight at that? There you go. Just a little bit more fight there. I mean, <laughs> he's struggling to bring down a running back who's off balance. <laughs> Look, Deron Payne is going to grow into a mature defensive tackle for somebody's team, and he is going to play NFL football, and he is going to be a a huge help. But I'm of the I'm of the hold on. I'm gonna delete this out of the video. But I am of the thought process that as a as a collegiate athlete, you should have some of the the easier things down pat, knowing how to properly use your body weight. Um, when your defensive lineman not allowing people past a certain point. Um, if you're playing a nose tackle, you should be able to take on, you're not going to win every one of them, but you should be able to take on double teams and not get squashed every time. He gets squashed almost every time he takes on a double team. He's not the anchor of the defense. Um, he needs to learn how to hand fight a little bit better. I saw some hand fighting, saw some, but like you said earlier in the video, inconsistent, just inconsistencies. Um, would I take him for Atlanta? Falcons fans? I mean... As an outsider, heck no. As, a, as someone on the inside with a Detroit Lions fan in this, in this video, um, I'm, not, I'm not putting him at nose tackle where we're going to need somebody. But I wouldn't mind having him next to Grady Jarrett. Let's just be honest. I mean, Grady Jarrett, Deron Payne, that would be, you know, it wouldn't be terrible. And you can coach him up and make him better. I mean, this was some of the things we talked about with Grady Jarrett, just his inconsistencies and how he wasn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. He went in the fifth round. So, um, yeah, I mean, Chris, final thoughts? I view him at this point as a rotational player. I mean, just being pretty blunt with it, they're like just sitting it right on the head, I think. I mean, this is going to be a guy who... I mean, not rotational player in the endurance issue like we have with reportedly with Vea, uh, but like rotational player just as a skill set guy. What would you? What would be the earliest pick that you would take him at? 
mid twenties, probably like twenty five ish. Obviously, I haven't watched everybody, so I mean, he could be really higher relative to this class, but uh, just like on a gen generic scale, like rounded base class, I would say about twenty five. And is he better? Is he is he better than Taven Bryan in your in your? I know you've watched no. some Taven Bryan tape. Did you I watch just, some Phillips tape? Uh, we just actually did a almost hour long breakdown on Taven Bryan yesterday, and basically the exact same stuff that we're bashing pain for right now is the exact same stuff that we love about Taven. That aggressiveness, that ability to not get pushed back, the ability to get penetration. Consistently, uh, I mean that's the same stuff that we love Taven for. So I would say no, he's not better than Brian. Uh, bias here, probably, but I don't think he's that much better than Hurst if, at all. Um, and I definitely wouldn't put him in the same class as Vea. I haven't watched. Enough <laughs> I don't think anybody's better than Vea at this point. <laughs> I think Vea is DT number one, but maybe I'm just being biased because I love Washington players. Plus, I I just watched this tape and just went goo goo gaga over it and was drooling. So, I don't think that Vea is like a top five or top ten guy. I think that the gap is a little bit closer. But I mean, yeah, I I'd say that he's probably at this point DT one, pending interviews and such. Yeah, on tape alone and interviews, he's going to be the DT1. But once we get to combine and pro days and visits, Payne, Brian, Phillips, um, Hurst, they're going to move around a lot. Somebody's going to run a ridiculous number at the combine for defensive tackle in this group. Somebody's going to do it. Yeah, and it's probably going to be Taven Bryant. It might be Taven Bryant. It might be it might be Vea too because did you hear over the summer that he ran a um a 4 4.81 40 <laughs> a sub 5 40 yeah. for a defensive tackle at 340 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Some of the things that you hear, and you're just like, that's believable. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys watching the Deron Payne tape with us. You can always find me here on YouTube on Unintentional Grounding. Please like, subscribe, share. In the comment section, tell me what you think of Deron Payne. Tell me where you think he would fit. Does he fit as an Atlanta Falcon? Does he fit elsewhere? If if you're from another team, tell me if where you think Deron Payne needs to land after watching this film. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Snapchat, and on Twitter at UNGR underscore show or Unintentional Grounding. Um, Chris, plug your stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, one more quick thought on Payne since you were talking about places he can land. One thought for me that came to mind is Tennessee. I wonder what he would do next to Gerald Casey. Mm. So anyway, uh, yeah, going back to <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> going back to plugging my stuff, I mean, I mean, he's going around that range. So anyway, uh, yeah, Prospect Central One Hundred One on Facebook, uh, Prospect Central One Hundred One on Twitter, Prospect Central One Hundred One on Instagram. And Crossway Central 101 on YouTube. Uh, pretty simple. We try to keep it the same for all of our stuff. Uh, but yeah, I post a lot of those breakdown style YouTube videos. Uh, my Isaac Hill item video. If you guys are looking for corners, that's probably my best one yet. So if you guys are looking for a starting point, definitely check out my Isaac Hill. Uh, and that should give you guys a good idea on what we like to do on our side. My name's Lieutenant Dan. This was Chris Robbins, and you were listening to nothing but the truth. And tape doesn't lie. See you guys for another tape film breakdown, um, film session. How we, what are we calling this, Chris? What do we, what do we need to call this? I Can call it every... Film breakdown, film yeah, session? Generally, generally for me, a session is like half hour to 45 minutes. And it generally involves like other people. Whereas, like, my breakdowns are, like, hour-long solo sessions where I just literally, like, stop and rewind and slow-mo, like, every little thing. We're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna call this a Falcon film session. 
We're just going to call this a Falcons film session. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, this is more of a session, I would say. Yep. Actual breakdown. See you guys on the flip side. Peace. Rise up. Deuces.